The Copenhagen Interpretation The Copenhagen Interpretation is one of the most widely discussed and accepted explanations of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is a branch of physics that deals with the smallest particles in the universe, things like electrons, photons, and atoms. The Copenhagen interpretation was developed in the 1920s by physicists Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg, two key figures in quantum theory. This interpretation addresses the strange behavior of particles at the quantum level, where the usual rules of classical physics don't seem to apply. To understand the Copenhagen interpretation, it's important to first grasp the core concept of quantum mechanics, superposition. In quantum mechanics, particles can exist in multiple states at the same time. For example, an electron can be in two places at once, or a photon, a particle of light can act like both a particle and a wave at the same time. These particles exist in a state of uncertainty, where their exact position or state isn't determined until they are observed or measured. This is very different from the everyday world, where objects have clear, defined positions and behaviors. The Copenhagen interpretation states that quantum particles do not have a definite state until they are observed. In other words, before measurement, particles exist in a cloud of probabilities where all potential outcomes are possible. But as soon as we observe or measure the particle, it collapses into one specific state. This is called the collapse of the wave function. To make this clearer, let's use a well-known thought experiment called Schrodinger's cat. In this scenario, a cat is placed in a sealed box with a radioactive atom, a Geiger counter, a vial of poison, and a hammer. The atom has a 50-50 chance of decaying, which would trigger the Geiger counter, causing the hammer to break the vial and release the poison, killing the cat. According to quantum mechanics, until the box is opened and the cat is observed, the cat is both alive and dead at the same time, because the state of the atom is in a superposition. Once the box is opened and the cat is observed, it collapses into either a state where it's alive or dead. This is where the Copenhagen interpretation comes in. It tells us that the cat is neither alive nor dead until someone opens the box and observes it. Until that point, the cat's state is undecided. The act of observation forces nature to choose one outcome. This idea that particles exist in a state of uncertainty until they are measured leads to one of the most perplexing aspects of quantum mechanics. It suggests that reality, at least at the quantum level, is not set in stone until someone interacts with it. This challenges our everyday understanding of the world, where objects exist whether we look at them or not. But at the quantum level, things don't seem to exist in a definite state until they are observed. This has led to a lot of philosophical debate about the nature of reality itself. One of the key ideas behind the Copenhagen interpretation is the wave-particle duality of matter. In classical physics, particles are solid, defined objects, like marbles or planets. But in quantum mechanics, particles can act like both particles and waves. A photon, for example, can behave like a particle, but it can also behave like a wave, depending on how we observe it. Before we observe it, it exists in a superposition of both states. The famous double-slit experiment is a classic example of this. In this experiment, particles, like photons or electrons, are fired at a screen with two slits. If we don't observe the particles, they behave like waves, creating an interference pattern on the screen, as if they pass through both slits at the same time. But if we observe which slit the particle goes through, it behaves like a particle, passing through one slit and creating a different pattern on the screen. This experiment shows that how we observe particles affects their behavior, which aligns with the Copenhagen interpretation.
The Copenhagen interpretation has been highly influential but also controversial. One of the main objections to it comes from Albert Einstein, who famously disliked the idea that reality at the quantum level is determined by observation. Einstein's famous quote, I like to think the moon is there even if I am not looking at it, reflects his discomfort with the idea that particles don't have definite properties until observed. He also objected to the randomness in quantum mechanics. According to the Copenhagen interpretation, quantum mechanics is inherently probabilistic. Einstein, on the other hand, believed that the universe should be deterministic, meaning that things should happen for a reason, not by random chance. This led to his famous quote, God does not play dice with the universe. Einstein, along with two other physicists, Boris Podolsky and Nathan Rosen, proposed the EPR paradox in 1935, aiming to show that quantum mechanics, as described by the Copenhagen interpretation, was incomplete. They argued that if quantum mechanics were correct, then it would allow for spooky action at a distance, what we now call quantum entanglement. In entanglement, Two particles can become linked in such a way that the state of one particle instantly affects the state of the other, no matter how far apart they are. This seemed to violate the idea that information cannot travel faster than the speed of light, a cornerstone of Einstein's theory of relativity. However, later experiments confirmed that entanglement is real, and the Copenhagen interpretation was largely upheld. Despite its success in explaining many quantum phenomena, the Copenhagen interpretation does not offer a complete or fully satisfying explanation of quantum mechanics for many physicists and philosophers. One of the main criticisms is that it doesn't explain how or why the act of observation collapses a particle's wave function. This is known as the measurement problem. While the Copenhagen interpretation tells us that observation leads to the collapse of the wave function, it doesn't explain what constitutes an observation or why it causes the collapse. Several alternative interpretations of quantum mechanics have been proposed to address these issues. For example, the many worlds interpretation suggests that when a quantum measurement is made, the universe splits into multiple parallel universes, one for each possible outcome. In one universe, Schrodinger's cat is alive, and in another, it's dead. According to this interpretation, there is no collapse of the wave function, all possible outcomes occur, but in different universes. Another alternative is the pilot wave theory, which was proposed by physicist David Bohm. This interpretation suggests that particles have definite positions at all times and are guided by an unseen pilot wave. This theory is deterministic, meaning that it rejects the randomness of quantum mechanics and offers a more classical explanation of the behavior of particles. Even though the Copenhagen interpretation has its critics, it remains the most widely taught and accepted explanation of quantum mechanics in physics today. It's successful because it works. It has helped scientists understand and predict the behavior of quantum particles with great accuracy. Quantum mechanics, guided by the Copenhagen interpretation, has led to the development of groundbreaking technologies like semiconductors, lasers, and quantum computers. In summary, the Copenhagen interpretation is a way of understanding quantum mechanics that emphasizes the role of observation in determining the state of quantum particles. It suggests that particles exist in a superposition of states until they are measured, at which point they collapse into a single state. While this idea challenges our everyday understanding of reality and raises deep philosophical questions, it has been remarkably successful in explaining the behavior of particles at the quantum level. Even though alternative interpretations exist, the Copenhagen interpretation remains one of the most important and influential ideas in modern physics.